Hello again and welcome back to another busy installment of the ABC of EVs, our introductory series to explain what is sometimes a complicated world. I've done a few videos now in this series on batteries, but today we are beginning a deep dive into the elements that make up the batteries that we use in electric vehicles. Today we'll start with a biggie. It's lithium. Stick around for the details. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to the channel. If you like what we do here, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. Remember back to your school days and those science class lessons. I can still see that big poster up on the wall. The periodic table. Now, unless you're a scientist, you probably haven't thought much about the periodic table since you left school. But if your memory is good enough, that LI symbol on the left hand side, on top of the really funky stuff like cesium and potassium, it's the lightest and smallest and extremely reactive, so it becomes really attractive to us for a whole range of applications actually, but stick around and we'll get onto that in just a moment. Lithium is quite widely spread out across our planet, great for us and great for batteries. Yes, but also there's a complication. The issue is that it doesn't occur in its elemental form naturally anywhere. For example, it's estimated that there's more than 200 billion tons of lithium in plain old seawater. That's enough for plenty of batteries, but that's difficult and expensive to extract the requisite amounts of lithium and in the right form from seawater. So we traditionally looked elsewhere for lithium. Chile is recognized as having the most reserves of lithium. However, it's Australia that's producing far and away the most lithium right now, at least. 40,000 tons, nearly half of the total world production in 2020, according to the US Geological Survey. There's also significant reserves in Argentina and China. Bolivia is meant to have a huge capacity for lithium, but it's not yet at a viable stage of extraction. So what do we use it for? We use lithium for a whole range of applications. Go back a few years and we'd have been talking about making ceramics and glazes and ovenware. But these days, thanks to breakthroughs in battery technology, it's well and truly taken over as the primary use of lithium. It's become an intrinsic part of lithium ion batteries and that's why we use it so widely today. But why do we use lithium in batteries for electric cars? Let's jump back to what we said at the start about lithium being so attractive for us for EVs. Well, we mentioned that lithium is quite reactive and we like it because it'll easily let go of an electron, which is exactly what we need for our circuit and the battery to function. It has a really negative voltage. It's great so we can put it in something with a positive voltage and get a really large window of voltage for the cells that make up EV batteries. So we can create these energy dense batteries that are really good for applications like mobile phones, like tablets, like electric cars. It's also quite light, relatively speaking. Now we all know that if you wanna get better efficiency from your EV or you know, any car, in fact, you can reduce the weight. And with batteries making up such a significant portion of the weight of a car, that's really important. So how do we get lithium? We've said that lithium isn't found in its natural form, it just doesn't grow on trees, <laughs> you might say, obviously. You have to go out there and get it. Now traditionally, mining hard rock from which you would isolate and extract lithium and its compounds has been the primary form. But advances and changes in battery technology have allowed us to get lithium from brine as is increasingly the case in South American hotspots like Chile, Argentina, and Bolivia. What's the future of lithium? Well, EVs and battery technology are evolving constantly. Changes in the demands of EVs and the chemistries within batteries, they're constantly altering the demands that we place on the elements and the compounds in them, like lithium and its derivatives. So, it's impossible to know for sure exactly what role lithium will play in a decade or a few decades' time. Changes to the cost of processing and extraction of not just lithium, but the likes of cobalt will have a large impact. What's also crucial and very important is how we can recycle lithium from batteries that are in use today. In a few decades time, they'll have been through the mill of EVs, then perhaps commercial energy storage and grid backup. And at that stage, it's crucial they don't go to landfill. They're worth too much. They won't go to landfill. They'll go to good use, but how do we recycle them and extract that to use again? Great strides are being made already in this arena, and only time will tell how it all works out on a global and a commercialized scale. So we've done our best to avoid a chemistry lecture. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you want to watch the rest of the videos in this series all about how we make EV batteries. We want to know what you think now. Let us know in the comments below. How do you see the future of lithium-ion batteries and what do we want from our EVs in the future? Is it more performance, more range? Is it to be lighter if we have more charging around? Can we have smaller batteries and then just charge more often? Or are batteries always going to be very, very heavy in our EVs because we want hundreds of miles of range just in case. Let us know. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up so we know to make more in the series just like it. And we'll see you on the next one.